Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review, the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who once went to a concert for the stupidest reason ever. You see, I am a professor of French and I am a part-time music commentator on YouTube, but I am also, and I don't talk about this too much, the world's biggest collector of Chewbacca memorabilia. That is the character from Star Wars, known as Chewbacca. And boy, it must have been 2006, 2007, somewhere around there, where I happened to find out, just sort of like randomly clicking around on some website, that there was some music artist who was using Chewbacca-like imagery. The name of the artist, or the name of the group, was Herman Dune. And I happened to see this exact image. Now you see there's a whole kind of gray area with uh, collecting Chewbacca where some things look like they're trying to be Sasquatch or Bigfoot as opposed to being Chewbacca. I think this also helps people to avoid getting copyright strikes. So this right here, this image was enough for me that I figured I'm a completist, I have to get everything possible. And while I was getting my doctorate at Santa Barbara, it happened to be that Herman Dune was playing right there on the middle of the street, uh, right, right, in the, right in the middle of downtown in a little club, and I went and saw Herman Dune. I had never heard a note of their music. I just knew that I had to go and get the CD, and I got a patch, and I got another CD, anything that kind of looked like Chewbacca. That's pretty stupid, right? <laughs> the good news was I stood, around, I stood around for the concert, and it was great. Very good, kind of folky, sort of um, smart, artsy-fartsy a little bit, but just really well sung, really well put together, uh, really good music. And it even turned out that the lead singer was from France. They don't sing in French, unfortunately. But I just sort of like went to this concert randomly. I, I bought the CDs that had Chewbacca on them. I listened to them and I enjoyed them. And I just kind of put that in my head. Herman Dune, a band I like. Then I kind of went back to sleep musically. As you know, I've been sleeping since about 2000. From 2000 to 2018, I wasn't paying really any real attention to music. And so this is the first time I've had a chance to listen to a Herman Dune album since that concert, what must have been 13 years ago. The name of the album is called Notes from Vinegar Hill. And despite the fact that he's a Frenchman, uh, this album is so Los Angeles. It is, uh, so like, like, if an album is very Brooklyn, I generally don't like it. I don't usually like the atmosphere, the feeling that comes from Brooklyn. But maybe because I lived in L.A. for a year, I have that kind of feeling, a kind of appreciation, a like of things from L.A. And this isn't just about L.A. It's a very L.A. thing in the way it's about one particular neighborhood, a neighborhood called Vinegar Hill, which I suppose is in Long Beach. I don't know. When I lived in L.A., it was all about who lived in Los Feliz or Eagle Rock or... I don't know, all these like weird little names and, and basically people just keep on getting priced out and having to move to new neighborhoods that were interesting. And as those new neighborhoods were interesting, all the artsy folks, the college graduates, the bohemian types, the, you know, would all kind of cluster together in a new area that was further and further away from everybody else. And they'd start a little commune and then the prices would go up. A brief search that I did on Vinegar Hill basically shows you that the average house price there is around a million dollars for like a small house. I could buy like five of these houses for that. But it's okay, it's not in LA. Uh, the thing about a lot of LA music is that it's often obnoxiously calm, at least LA rock and roll. Uh, it's like very relaxed. And if you don't like relaxed music, if you don't like the music of somebody who's very clearly having quite a nice life, thank you very much, this is not the album for you. This is a guy, uh, I think based on what I read, there used to be multiple people in the band, but it's now just this one guy. And this is the kind of guy that I've sort of known my whole life. Like, pretty well-educated, smart, kind of funny, like, maybe drinks too much. I don't know. He doesn't sing about smoking pot, but it wouldn't be against type. Sort of like, sort of slightly bohemian-ish, but not really. And just kind of like a nice guy who probably knows how to make like a, like a good black bean soup. Okay? Just like like well-meaning, kind, good neighbor, good person to know. Never quite ambitiously going out there and being cutthroat and becoming a super millionaire, never falling into absolute poverty and living on the street, but just the kind of artistic, transient lifestyle that can lead to a lot of great music. Sort of, I guess, put in a different word, it's kind of a slacker lifestyle. But a slacker lifestyle, while also being a good artist, produces a lot more that's interesting. When I moved to LA, I actually moved with the intention of being like the Big Lebowski. I don't 
I don't smoke marijuana and I, I don't really drink, but my intention was just to be a happy slacker just walking around doing nothing. Eventually my ambition got the better of me. But if you like that kind of feeling, the feeling of just kind of waking up and maybe going to 7-Eleven at 10 o'clock in your flip-flops, this album has that kind of feeling. What's nice is that at times you can feel the pain that this choice has inflicted on him. Even though he seems to be very comfortable with being a slacker, just kind of living his life in this cool little part of LA, and I'm sure all the friends at the block party listen to the CD or the album, and they all like it, and it's all that kind of thing. There's a song called Birds of Prey, where he talks about thinking he could have been that way. He could have taken New York. Another song called P.S. I Could Have Done Things. It shows this kind of slight regret at his lack of ambition. And one thing that I would say, you know, some cities have a personality, right? Like some, some cities are, can be defined by sort of a, an overarching emotion. Ambition really is the, is the emotion that dominates Los Angeles, which is why I think that slackers in LA are particularly funny because it's so at odds with all these people on the make, trying to make it to the next step, trying to be the person who steps on as opposed to the person who has stepped upon, right? Uh, so it's nice. Now the thing about this album, I would say there are about four different modes to this album. I like it, first of all. Um, I had trouble at times figuring out if I was gonna review it, if I had something to say about it, but I think I do, and it's definitely worth listening to. But there's four modes that I like in decreasing amounts uh, of enjoyment. The, the overarching mode is a 70s rock-like, folk-like feeling. Think sort of like the band, or Bob Dylan with the band, or Neil Young in the 70s, which can be sort of Kitty Corner to the second style, which is a very kind of conscious old style country, kind of simple melodies and pedal steel guitars. There's a slight blues-ish blues streak to this album as well for a couple of tracks. And then finally, the thing that I like the least are the times where it reminds me, particularly rhythmically, of Beck. Sort of the worst of LA music, if you ask me. But overall, the whole thing, it's all united. Like it all feels like it's one artist and it doesn't feel like it's one artist who's trying to do like, what if I do this, what if I do that? It just seems like it's the natural thing for this person to do. So I'm gonna start off with my favorite track on the album, which is the first track on the album, which is in this style of 70s style folk rock. It reminds me most of kind of a Nashville Skyline era Dylan or like an album from the band. Very nice restrained voice. He's all the way throughout, the lyrics are all very personal to him. Now his life, doesn't appear to be particularly fascinating. It's mostly just the life I just described of like a smart, nice, friendly slacker who's hanging out and writing music, right? But it's a slice of his kind of messy life. There's some nice horns to it, a really nice melody, uh, and I'm just gonna play you a little bit of this song, Say You Love Me Too by Herman Dune. Just a great song. And you hear a lot of pedal steel all the way throughout the album. I love good pedal steel. When the horns come in on this, it becomes almost like a soul track. Just a great song. One of the songs of the year, definitely. Vinegar Hill, a song exclusively about this neighborhood, uh, is nice, kind of a Neil Young style song. Just stop it with a harmonica, though, at the end. At the end, the harmonica. Uh, we just need to have a harmonica moratorium. Just, like, seriously. If you could press a button and remove harmonica, Either have all the harmonica that's ever been put on any music or remove it all. What if you could just remove it all? Just, just snap it out of existence. Even the songs that do well with it, I don't think they would do that much worse. Anyway, uh, the next uh, track sort of in this, in this mode, I would say, is People Say I Could Have Done Great Things. Uh, kind of a waltz, great pedal steel on this. And it's very personal and haunting. This feeling as though he's maybe wasted his life, maybe death will come too soon. Freak Out Till the Morning Dew is a nice song, which I guess is sort of about some of the anxiety that he feels at night waking up at two o'clock and reading the news. 
I know on election night, I woke up literally at two o'clock and, and read the news and couldn't get back to sleep until five. So I was actually freaking out until the morning due. Uh, and it's kind of a funny, it's a very funny course. I know what I'm gonna do, freak out till the morning due. As though this bad decision that happens to you, being uh, in a state of insomnia, as though that's an intentional choice. It's not always possible to divide this style, the 70s style folk rock, from the old style country on a song like Heartbroken and Free, which has a beautiful chorus and a nice shuffle, or the previously mentioned Birds of Prey, which almost even sounds like it could be like an Appalachian recording. I mean, it sounds that old style, old school, great picked guitar all the way throughout. Hawaii Morning, basically all songs about Hawaii are annoying because everyone who sings about Hawaii is just there just as a tourist. But still, the pedal steel is so good on this that it makes up for any weakness in the thematics. Then there's a kind of blues style. Now there's a track called Mookie Mookie. Now listen, this guy is, is from LA, and Mookie Betts is a player on the Los Angeles Dodgers. So I thought, well maybe this is like a baseball reference. But then I thought, this guy is French. The French don't care about baseball. I think Mookie is the name of his cat. And him singing a song about his cat, who also features prominently on the cover, sort of makes sense. This is a very cat-centric album. The kind of thing that somebody who's living this kind of very enviable, very awesome life, right, that he would have a song about his cat. It's kind of like a fun blues party song, a great guitar solo. I actually sort of wish he had more solos. And sort of like, you know, why not party this guy? He's fun. Like, let's just hang out with him. You know, also Mookie is, is one of my nicknames for, uh, for my wife. So I like calling her Mookie because um, Mookie used to play on the Red Sox, which is the team I grew up loving, but now he plays on the Dodgers. Anyways, it's not hard to, to like a song called Mookie Mookie, right? <laughs> and it's just a nice kind of stomping blues song. And then the track LA Blues, uh, the most kind of uh, uh, French pronunciation comes in through here, calls it Hollywood, like it doesn't quite hit the Hollywood, uh, but that's great because it's about the emptiness of the ambition. And you know, when I lived in LA and I had no ambition, my ambition was to have no ambition, I remember looking around, seeing all the people at the coffee bean and tea leaf or whatever, like trying to network and make deals and get onto a pilot and all this, and just kind of being like, that's the frozen coffee thing, iced blended they were called, basically 900 calories in a cup. Not, not that good. Then there's the last part. So, you know, we had the blues, we had the 70s, we had the old style country, and then we have the part that's kind of like Beck. And I, as I've talked about on this channel, I really don't care for Beck too much. Um, in particular, there's a song on here, though, that I want to spend a little bit of time with. It's called The Ballad of Herman Dune. So it seems to be just a song about himself. And musically, it has like a drum loop that reminds you of Loser. It has a, uh, a slide guitar that reminds you of Loser, and he's kind of fake rapping all the way through. But there's an essential difference here. He's not talking about bottles and cans, clapping hands. He's not talking about getting funky with cheese whiz. He's talking about his real life. He's actually trying to communicate something through this faux LA rap song. So it's not so bad to me. Like I don't find it obnoxious. Musically, I don't like it that much because I much prefer when he's making rock and roll music. I don't know why I said musically like that, but I did. Um, and also there's a very nice, very French moment on here where he takes offense to people asking him, what do you do? Do you know, it's a very American thing when you meet somebody asking them, what do you do for a living? Because you're basically just asking them, how much money do you have? How much are you worth to me? Um, and also a great slacker line, you can only lose if you're trying to win. It's like, you know, you can't miss a shot you don't make. I don't know, is that like an inversion of Michael Scott's quoting of uh, Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's like, you also don't miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Interestingly, at the end here, he talks about Snoop Dogg, talking about LBC, Long Beach County, on MTV. And that's where I realized that maybe the reason I don't like Beck, maybe the reason I had trouble with this guy is that I see so much of myself in him. When I lived in LA or when I lived anywhere, I've always associated it with what music and culture I know from that place. So if I lived in Long Beach, all I would do the entire time is just talking about how much drama there is in the LBC. I would just be totally stuck in that mode of thinking about Snoop Dogg all the time. So here he is directly mentioning Snoop Dogg and talking about that's how he feels when he lives there, even though his life could not be more different. It's kind of cool. Uh, the song Scorpio Rising is just, again, this, this sort of like way too nice like life of just walking down to the beach and living near the beach. 
Uh, and then the album closes with a sort of tribute to the recently deceased John Prine with a cover of Long Monday, which is nice, except it has that kind of Beck drum loop as well. So there you go. You could do much worse than listening to this album. It has that, it has the quality that I like of Southern California music, even though this is a, a Frenchman. Uh, it has that quality that I like of being laid back, of being relaxed, but also being kind of personal, uh, creates a good atmosphere, and it's definitely worth listening, if nothing else for that first song. Okay, well, I'm gonna go put these things back into the Chewseum. That's the name of my Chewbacca collection. I couldn't find the rest of my Herman Dune Chewbacca memorabilia. It is in like deep storage because I have too much stuff. Okay, well, until next time uh, where I will be talking about, I don't think this video is gonna get a lot of views. My, my review on tongue didn't get a lot of views. I would appreciate it if you like these reviews of artists that are lesser known than, you know, Kylie Minogue or Lady Gaga or whatever. Uh, Nas, right? Like, if you like these reviews, it is nice if you put it in the comments. That helps to kind of keep me going because, like, I know this is, you know, a good video for me gets a thousand views, a bad one doesn't get a hundred, and this one's probably going to top out at like 70. So, I don't know. Just say thank you for doing this or not. Okay, until next time, for Chewbacca, there's the camera.